as you guys know, I'm going to be talking about service learning in nursing. And in talking with some of the other nursing symposium participants, and probably the ones that I haven't had a chance to talk to in depth yet, I think pretty much all nursing programs have some level of service learning, right? We're nurses. It's what we do. Um, what I'm going to talk about is some personal experience with service learning, and then also um, some different kind of innovative ideas. And then at the end, what Alex alluded to is we have some, um, a really cool interactive session, and we're actually going to give you a take home that you can use um, as a deliverable. So that way, we're not just pie in the sky talking about ideas. It's important to, to kind of focus those ideas and bring, bring them to um, fruition. You guys can have a, a pragmatic tool that you can take home with you and talk with your um, coworkers or faculty and say, hey, what about this, or how do we make it work for us? Um, so the picture here is a group of um, CNL students by a show of hands. And I imagine it's going to be more the, um, the nursing faculty. What, is this, what does CNL stand for? Does anybody? Certified nurse leader. <laughs> exactly. Um, so basi <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, CNL students um, are getting their master's degree, but they have um, an undergraduate degree in something else first. So it's, a, it's an accelerated um, degree program, but they are entry-level master's students. So these are very highly educated nurses, but they're entering the field for the very first time with a master's degree. So just to kind of to give you some background. All right, so as far as the contents of the talk, um, talk about the definition of service learning just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And then I will highlight our specific event. Uh, the great thing about teaching through experience and I've talked to some people about this um, in the last few hours that we've been here. But the great thing about teaching through experience is it's my experience and it's what we did. And I'm pretty sure no one can raise their hand and be like, no, you didn't. No, that didn't happen. So um, it's my experience. And it's true and it's valid. And hopefully uh, you can take a piece of it home with you or back to your schools and incorporate it. But um, that's the great thing about teaching that way because uh, there's no wrong or right answer. It's, it's an experience and it's valuable information. So uh, we're going to talk about how the students learn through debriefing after our event. And if you don't know what debriefing is, we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about that. As well as the outcomes, because we all know we have to have deliverables in, in any profession, right? Something to measure what we've done. Uh, the effects, because this is a nursing education focused event, uh, we'll first talk about the effects on students. And then I didn't want to leave out the effects on the community partners. Because if you don't um, take into account and acknowledge the community partners uh, and actually sometimes let them take the lead, you're not going to have a successful event. event and it's certainly not going to be sustainable. So uh, as far as a definition, I am not one to read from the PowerPoint. These are kind of long and boring. but. Um, Basically, it's an educational approach that um, combines uh, taking students, for me it was taking students into the community to fulfill an actual need identified by the community that was a valuable learning experience. More than just volunteering, it had a little bit more structure and purpose to it. Um, it can apply um, to classroom learning for local agencies. So one way that you could do it in the classroom maybe is doing like um, gift bags or um, bags for homeless people or um, writing cards for veterans. Like there's things, uh, compassion and culture and language that you can teach through that. Um, the event that I'm going to talk to you about is one where we actually went out into the community, which is probably more traditional when you think of service learning and nursing. All right, so um, you will notice throughout the program that I don't have any pictures of the participants. We were actually at a, a middle school in West Baltimore. And I, mean, I know the news made it over here. This is the same neighborhood where the Freddie Gray uprising happened. So um, it is known nationally. It's an underserved area with a vulnerable population. And unfortunately, um, there are a lot of unmet needs there. So in a way, 
um, pretty much anything that we went in and did with this community, partnering with them, um, was going to be seen as beneficial. So um, actively engaging nurses, um, refining cultural consciousness. Again, this is of the, of the nursing students. Um, and using individual coursework. Um, also looking at uh, health at the population level, which is really a buzzword, and um, looking at the healthcare system as well. Okay, so for our event, it was actually funded by um, AACN and NIH, um, and it was called Improving Health for All of Us in Baltimore and Beyond. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's a national initiative for precision medicine by NIH. So basically what this is saying is um, we have lots of data and research on um, Caucasian men as far as how to treat high blood pressure, for example. But um, if I see a patient in clinic who's um, a Hispanic female, the medicine that works on a 50-year-old Caucasian male may not work as good on a young Hispanic female. So, but what we need to, to gather that information is research and for people to participate in research. To clarify, this service learning event was not research. It was education about research. Why should you participate? What does it mean? How can it benefit you and your community? So um, I received this funding and then I had to implement the event. And that's when we offered the opportunity for nursing students to partner with us um, for service learning. So um, we actually went to the school, the, the middle school, to partner with them and offer this educational event. We were very purposeful about, we didn't want it to be on the university grounds or campus because we wanted to bring the information to the community. So um, we went to a middle school and we asked them what format they would prefer as far as what's gonna speak to your community best. I don't live in West Baltimore. I'm not from West Baltimore. I don't pretend to assume that I know um, how they um, learn or accept uh, people from outside the community the best. So the school has a community outreach coordinator as well as talking with um, different stakeholders and leaders. And what they picked was an interactive town hall. And the reason we did an interactive town hall is because much like our nursing students, the um, community members did not want to be spoken to. They wanted to speak with um, the nursing students, faculty, whoever was going to be doing this interactive town hall. And they were very particular that they wanted the opportunity to ask questions. So um, we, that's how we marketed it. Um, and we included um, faculty, students, and community partners. And of course, we had to have faculty to be able to supervise the students. And the community partner's role was to inform what activities we did and how we presented the content. So um, the event basically facilitated the nursing students' ability to participate in service learning. Basically, we gave them an opportunity. This was not a required part of a course. Uh, it was not graded. It was basically um, a volunteer opportunity that the students could do. And um, we, we kind of labeled it as a way for them to develop cultural consciousness outside of the traditional classroom. So that's the big you know, take home for this service learning and most service learning experiences, right? So um, I can take a textbook or even a YouTube video and I can tell you about cultural consciousness. I can define it. I can um, show you um, a video of it maybe. But until you're embedded um, in a room of people who look nothing like you or um, don't speak like you or whatever the example is, um, it's very difficult to learn. So experiential learning was really uh, beneficial for this content. And while I had funding and while I had nursing students that were willing to um, come alongside me and do this, we kind of turned this educational opportunity into what I would call a living lab, so to speak. Okay, so before we get to the, the learning through debriefing happens after the event. So the only other thing that I wanted to um, say was that um, at the University of Maryland, we have a simulation lab. So we do a lot of um, learning, and that is a level of experiential learning. But I, can't, I couldn't recreate this in a lab. I couldn't um, train an actor or an actress to do this because this immersed the students 
in the neighborhood with the row homes that have a blue tarp over them, but there's still people living there. Um, it embedded the students in a school where 100% um, of the children that attend there receive lunches because of um, the socioeconomic status of the neighborhood. Um, it embedded students in an environment where there's a high level of um, violence and distrust for outsiders. So um, again, um, it was a wonderful experience and it was wonderful for the community to let us in. And it's, um, it's a little bit of, um, oh, how do I say this, unpredictableness that you have to be prepared for. So you have to kind of let the students know that ahead of time. And you also have to have the right faculty because you can't go into this experience knowing exactly how it's going to go, right? You don't know exactly what questions the community is going to ask, or um, you know, you just kind of have to be prepared for the unprepared. Be flexible, and and it'll go just fine. And and this one did, luckily. Um, so basically, the nursing students helped with um, questionnaires with the educational event. I'm not going to go in detail about the event itself. I didn't get pictures of the students actually doing the event because um, with a lot of the children and families that involved consent to get their picture. So out of respect for the community, um, I did not um, include any of these in there. But basically, the students were um, interactive with other um, participants. There were students sitting next to community members. Um, some students helped watch the children or engage them in games so that the parents could interact uh, in the town hall. Um, they answered health-related questions that the participants might have. Um, we had some students, when they realized they were nursing students there, ask how they become a nurse. Um, those sort of things, just an exposure to the community and a way for the university to say, we're here in a way that that community isn't used to always receiving. Um, also giving the community the reins as far as um, you take the lead and you tell us what what date you want it, what time you want it, um, what outcomes do you want as a community? And then also, how do we give them the results from the town hall? Um, and we went to the, com to the um, community outreach coordinator, and she asked basically the members of the school, how do you want the results? Um, and they ended up uh, via newsletter, something that they could easily kind of beam out to everyone is what they wanted. But do you see how? Um, with service learning, by no means did I come as a PhD prepared nurse to this poor underserved community and say, you know what, I'm going to do this for your community and it's going to be the best thing ever. Because it would not have been successful because it's not meaningful to them. So I would say probably um, about a year before you plan on doing a true service learning activity is when you need to start partnering and exploring options with the community. And you can't go in with a mindset of, oh, my students need to learn how to take blood pressure, so we're going to do a blood pressure screening. Because you've already kind of biased your activity. So as best you can. Now, we all know as educators, we have essentials that we need to follow and certain um, guidelines and things that we need to teach. But I would say before you um, decide what students you're going to invite or what course you're going to incorporate it in, Go to the community first, see what their needs are, and then um, know your courses or your faculty well enough that you approach them and say, hey, you know what? They need sports physicals in this um, school here. Do you have students that can provide that? And that's going to give you a much um, higher success rate for the community as well as your students. Um, so as far as how, what was the student's learning experience? Um, we did do a debriefing session. I actually had the students put it in writing as well as um, talking with them individually and as a group. And I felt like putting it in writing gave them a chance to do a little bit of journaling because some of them needed to decompress. Uh, it, um, it was a very positive experience, but it's a lot of activity and adrenaline, and then all of a sudden it's over and you go home and you're like, okay, how do I kind of unpack that? So um, the students reported very positive personal experiences as far as many of them said they would have done it even if it wasn't something for school or required. And um, the same feedback has happened with similar events that I've done. Um, I have specific quotes from the students, but because we're kind of um, 
skimming the surface and we have a, an activity at the end of this, um, I'd be more than happy to email or provide that to people if they kind of want to hear some of the students' voices. Um, they articulated um, being informed on the importance of precision medicine and gaining community trust in the conduct of research or teaching about research. So even though we were there to teach the community about the importance of precision medicine, guess what? The nursing students had to be kind of resourceful and competent on what precision medicine was in order to interact with the community. Um, so we had a speaker from AACN actually giving the talk from um, AACN and NIH that was very st structured and specific about what he had to say, but the students had to um, have a baseline knowledge beforehand in order to um, interact with the community. So the educational activity provided opportunities to practice communication and leadership skills in a community like West Baltimore, which again is not always open to outsiders. So how do you um, talk with children, right? Some of um, these nursing students maybe are um, studying to be um, adult health nursing students or ICU nursing students. And while we all have a required bit of pediatric exposure to go through rotations through our programs, many of them weren't comfortable talking with children or just hadn't had a lot of opportunity outside of clinical practice. So working on talking with a you know, seven-year-old versus talking with a 70-year-old is quite different. And you might think that um, nurses and nursing students are very proficient with that, but um, we get there, but it, it takes practice, believe it or not. So that was a great learning experience. And again, these are the things that the students communicated to us um, along the way. And then it inspired students to pursue solutions unique to underserved populations. Um, kind of like what I said earlier, it's nurses, it's what we do. A lot of times when um, providers are limited or access to health care is not there, it's the nurses and the nurse practitioners um, that are willing to go into communities that are kind of um, not the most popular or not the most desirable or um, even international environments. So um, I was really happy that the students picked up on that. And there might be a little bias. I don't know if it's because we've threaded that through their program at the university or is that their heart and it's coming out and that's why they're in our program at the university. But um, it was kind of a nice outcome. So um, what did we see as far as outcomes? Um, the students adapted to, the be to meet the challenges by remaining flexible. Again, unless I picked you guys all up and t teleported you to that neighborhood in West Baltimore, just like I said before, I can tell you and I can um, show you pictures. But unless you experience it, it was really unique um, to see how the students responded. And they really stepped up um, in a safe environment supervised by their faculty. So I'm thinking, you know what? One of those students may be an ICU nurse. And something comes up. And it's not the exact same environment. But we're teaching critical thinking skills that aren't specific to one environment or one population. And I was talking to someone else um, at the symposium earlier today, and I said, you know what, I can't teach a student every single clinical situation that they're going to come across ever in their career. It's just not possible. So that's when those critical thinking skills, um, clinical reasoning skills, I think someone said earlier, that we really need to teach in our nursing students as far as you can't depend on me. It's got to be self-initiated, but we can kind of plant those seeds. And we did see some of that here. Um, the town event was perceived as providing a positive footprint in an underserved community focused on the needs of the community. Score one for the university, right? We need to have a better reputation as far as embracing these communities and not just going to them for research participants. Um, and I imagine the um, residents of West Baltimore are probably thinking, if one more person comes to me to consent for a research study from Johns Hopkins or University of Maryland, I'm going to throw up. Um, and I don't blame them. So again, we need to be able to give um, to the community and provide something valuable because it's a partnership. It's not, a, it's not one way. Um, so the university was very happy with this, needless to say. Um, and most importantly, the participants were engaged and asked meaningful questions. So um, when we got finished talking about the education uh, with the town hall, one of the questions that someone asked, and I really applaud her, she said, so you guys are going to want me to take medicine that you have no idea how it's going to affect me? 
Well, no, of course not. But that was her question, and it gave us a chance to revisit that and talk to the whole community um, about um, what we were doing or what we were hoping to do. Um, so again, uh, the effects on students, being an active participant, seeing a bigger picture of the world than just the corner they live in. I've kind of talked about that already. Um, students felt good about helping others. Well, don't we all? I think that's kind of by design, right? Um, it makes you feel good that you're contributing and actually doing something positive. And these students just happen to be getting some course credit for it as well. Um, but I think that's the things that you're going to be most successful at when you enjoy anyway. Um, provided diverse experiences, uh, focusing on the unique needs of community members, and opportunities to learn individual and structural level determinants of health. There's another word, uh, another buzzword that people are always talking about. Um, Exploring health disparities, even in this short two-hour town hall event, um, it spurred discussions and interest that weren't there before. Um, and cultural consciousness. Well, again, we've already talked about how we kind of um, help students see outside the box of the world that they live in. Um, effects on community partners. Now, I did have a strategic picture where everyone's kind of, you can't identify any specific faces. But um, this is where we had the talk. There's the speaker and the, um, the different slides that he was going through. But I think I've already touched on the effects for community partners. Um, they valued the fact that we went to them first before we actually, you know, oh, here's the event that we want to do. Um, also, uh, I want to say a, a large percentage, I don't have an exact number, of the funding that we received was poured into the community. So um, as far as food and resources, we were able to get transportation to the event. Like We didn't want to tax the community in any way. So um, they really enjoyed the fact that we kind of got to love on them and um, lift up the community and provide some fun stuff for them along the way. OK, so I have no idea as far as time, but I think this is a good transition as far as our breakdown sessions. Um, let me explain this to you really quick, and then Alex can kind of fill in anything that we're missing. and. Um, if you guys have any questions, either about the presentation or about this, then maybe we'll pause while people are moving around and you can ask questions. Or you can find me um, later, and I'll be happy to ask that for you. So one of the things that Alex and I wanted to do was provide some structure as far as, OK, service learning is not a difficult concept. But how do we give somebody who um, attended the symposium today some structure and say, you know what, I want to implement more service learning on a formal level at my institution, but I, I don't know how to do it, or um, I need just some simple structure. So um, Alex actually came up with this form. And I think um, you have the paper copies. OK, he'll, he'll distribute those for when we do the breakout session. Um, but basically, what we're going to have you guys do is um, work, and probably in the tables that you're at is why they um, have you with staff and faculty together. And um, you guys are going to come up with um, a service learning experience that you can bring either to your home institution or for the course hero faculty, you're the community members. And we want your input to the faculty as far as, that would be meaningful to me. Or I don't know why you would do it that way, because I would never come to something like that. Even though we're all from different backgrounds, different communities, um, I want you guys to come up with one, two, three, four, five, six or seven different sheets of paper. Um, and then at the end of the time, what we'd like to do is have one person, just a quick you know, three minute presentation as far as this is what we came up with. So we might have three that look very similar. We might have five that are all very different. We'll see how it goes. Um, so who would be a good community partner for nursing students? And again, this isn't just for the, the, the nursing people. I want to hear from the uh, course hero faculty, or course hero staff as well. Um, what could this partner experience ship, um, look like in practice and describe the activity? It doesn't have to be detailed. It's fine. Um, how does the community benefit? How do students benefit? You heard some of my examples in the lecture. And then this is something that um, I touched on in the lecture. but. What kind of assignment can students produce at the end of the experience to reinforce the learning? Do you guys remember what we did for my students? What did I say I did? 
Yes, so one person was listening. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so journaling is an example. Um, so if, and just in case that question throws anyone, but um, so now, none of you can use journal. Well, you can use journaling, but you have to say journaling and something else. Um, and then the other thing, now this would be more specific to the nursing faculty. If you want to add how you can tie one or two of the essentials from whatever program you're teaching in back to this. Because if you want to add this to your curriculum formally, um, that's probably the best practice to do that with. But I didn't put that on here because everybody's kind of in different um, programs and places. So that's something that the Course Hero faculty will have to kind of consult to the, the nursing people. So that is service learning in a nutshell. And everyone's like, oh, well, that was easy. So now you guys get to do it and design your perfect event. And at this point, I'll take any questions as far as the talk or the activity. Alex, did you have anything else? No, the only thing I was going to suggest is, I'm, and we're going to break off into the activity, and, and Kristen and I will be uh, kind of roaming around to see if we could uh, be of any help. But um, it would be really awesome if the educators uh, wouldn't mind maybe providing the, the Coursero uh, the people surrounding you from Coursera, uh, a little bit of background on, on what exactly it is that you're teaching at your institutions, because then hopefully the discussion can be um, catered towards uh, you know what needs your students have and the types of classes that you teach. And I know uh, Kristen alluded to that, but um, but if we could start off on with that, that would be awesome. So and also just a great way to get to know everyone. So yeah, so why don't we start with that? We'll break off in discussion. We'll probably have a, about 15-ish minutes to do this, and then we'll come back together. All right, so I hate to interrupt all this good discussion, and it's um, been a really valuable just for me to walk around and listen to the conversations and see what you guys are writing. And the, the body language actually is really cool, too, to see everybody leaning in and, and talking. Um, initially, we had planned to have everybody present, but again, out of respect of time and keeping us on schedule, um, I do think that if you guys will, if you haven't finished filling out your paper, Please fill it out because we will provide copies for everyone. So even if you, your group doesn't present, the information will go out to everyone. But um, are there maybe two groups that are just really passionate about wanting to present or um, want to talk about what they did? Like maybe this group right here? I heard lots of good discussion. <sighs> I'll get you the mic. Hold on just a sec. What? Oh, I got it. I can hold these two things. <laughs> oh, I'm Sydney. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm part of the student community team at Course Hero. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to connect Course Hero and nursing students in the area and then also with our volunteer program at Course Hero. We partner with a local uh, middle school um, uh, is called KIPP um, and uh, we uh, essentially right now on a monthly basis uh, host different activities at KIPP for their after school programs. Um, in the past we've done science education we or science activities, we've done um, video game activity, art activities, etc. And it's kind of like a, a reward for the students if they've done well um, in their classes then they can come to this after school activity that we help host. So we thought it'd be awesome to connect nursing students with this uh, community partnership that we already do. Um, so uh, we would like to do, um, first of course we would assess the need of KIPP um, and ask them, you know, what type of health education um, would you be interested in um, and having nurses potentially come in and help with that education. Um, we thought that maybe nutrition for middle schoolers, let's say, would be something that would be good to talk about. Um, at the school and have some type of activity where we're teaching nutrition in a fun way. Um, so again, we would make sure that this aligns with the community and we would talk to them about what they actually think would be the best way uh, for this to happen. But um, let's say that we were going to create potentially a game. So it's like we could use leverage course here as engineers to create a fun nutritional game um, or a game that teaches nutrition. And so we could have the course here engineers partnering the nursing students um, to figure out exactly what that would look like and have the nursing students help us assess um, what the need would be at this middle school. 
and then having um, us go into the middle school um, and having the nurses and the course hero people and the middle schoolers interacting together um, to kind of go through um, this game activity and maybe they could help us um, with different aspects of the game and create a game that is for themselves that in the end maybe um, potentially shows them like what the they could be eating. That's good. Um, so uh, so how does this uh, benefit the community, um, nutritional education? How does this benefit the nursing students? Um, they can learn about how to talk about food and nutrition um, with probably a different audience than they're used to, which would be younger children, um, and then also practice their communication skills. Um, and then what kind of assessment can students produce at the end of the experience? Um, potentially we were talking about um, having this be an activity where they follow up with the community afterwards, so it's not just a one and done activity. Um, so that can reinforce, lear reinforce learning for the nursing students through the repeated experience. Um, and so we could have a feedback survey um, after each activity so that they can give feedback on how to improve next time. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Any quick questions or comments about this group? That was excellent. Yeah. Okay. Do we maybe want to do one more? Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Katie. Um, I'm on the marketing team. It's a thrill to have everyone here. So thanks so much for coming out. Um, so our group um, took inspiration from Marsha's school and community um, to focus on r a rural, smaller community that one of their limitations or struggles could be access or uh, widespread knowledge about when to go to the doctor. What What is it when you're sick and when should you seek out help? Um, so in these super like tight-knit communities, uh, people come together around you know, schools, churches, community centers. So idea was to host an event at one of those local community centers and actually bring in leaders. So people who maybe are um, often interacting with individual families. So it could be a leader at the church or leader at schools, teachers, things like that, where they actually are someone who people often seek advice from and can help disseminate this after the program. Um, to have a discussion where they share, you know, what are the health challenges that you see in the community? Uh, what, um, what do you want to know more of? Like, what can we supply that's helpful? And then also make sure people feel really comfortable that it's okay to share, you know, health issues and to ask these questions that it's encouraged and not something that you should, you know, keep private um, and be comfortable with that. Um, community benefits from knowing about all of these things and having information about preventative health care, uh, things like go get a checkup every six months, those things that may not be top of mind and how to get access to that. Uh, students are benefiting from engaging with their community uh, and, and teaching ab about access, learning new perspectives, communication experience with different individuals. And then one idea for an, an assignment would be to actually pass out a pamphlet or a laminated one pager that they could keep next to the fridge or keep somewhere that has kind of the high level, like, feel like this, do this. Like, have you gotten your checkup this year? Yes, no, like how to do that. Um, maybe information about healthcare, um, where you can go to get free services uh, and just make sure that that's distributed out to the community. Awesome. So. So one of the first things that came to mind when I heard you say the first couple of sentences, how do I teach my nursing students clinical preventative guidelines without them just reading the manual? I mean, like, OK, you need to get cancer screening this, and your blood pressure should be. What a great way to make it come to life for the students. And they're going to look back and remember that when they're taking that NCLEX exam. Uh, and then the community is going to benefit, like you said, from um, having that information. So. Um, Here's the other um, kind of um, thing. You can turn anything into service learning, I think, is, is kind of what we've learned. Um, those are really interesting examples, and I have no doubt that every table had something just kind of as valuable and, um, and interesting. So I appreciate you guys sharing, and um, thank you for playing along. Thank you.